So we've talked about Markovnikov hydrohalogenation. That's when you just use a halo acid. Now let's talk about anti-Markovnikov hydrohalogenation. Anti-Markovnikov hydrohalogenation only works with hydrobromic acid, HBr. And to be anti-Markovnikov, you have to include peroxide. The mechanism involves radicals, and we'll deal with it in another chapter. But, regiochemically, the bromine adds to the less substituted position, and the hydrogen adds to the more. Now, because we go through radical intermediates, there are no stereochemical preferences. This gives us a plethora of stereochemical outcomes. In other words, you get both the anti product and the syn product, and they're enantiomers. So that's four different stereochemical outcomes. The regiochemistry, however, is anti Markovnikov. When your reagent is dilute sulfuric acid, then you know you're going to get acid catalyzed hydration. You can think of the reagent as being HOH, where the X is the hydrogen and the Y is the OH. And we are going to get Markovnikov hydration. So the OH adds to the more substituted position, and the H adds to the less substituted position. This outcome is Markovnikov. Notice I haven't drawn any stereochemistry because all options are on the table, both syn and anti. It should be noted that if you take your alcohol and react it with concentrated sulfuric acid in the presence of heat, you get the reverse process, which is acid-catalyzed dehydration. When your reagents are first borane, BH3, in tetrahydrofurane, THF, followed by sodium hydroxide and hydrogen peroxide, you get anti-Markovnikov hydration. The hydroxyl group will add to the less substituted position. The hydrogen will add to the more substituted position. The stereochemistry is syn, so you only get two products, and the regiochemistry is anti-Markovnikov. When your reagents are hydrogen gas, and a metal such as platinum or palladium, you get catalytic hydrogenation, where a hydrogen adds to both of the sp2 hybridized carbons, and you get rid of the double bond. So a hydrogen adds to both sites. There's no regiochemistry since both uh, groups that are added are hydrogen. And it should also be noted that if any chirality centers are created, the stereochemistry is syn. In this case, no chirality centers were created, so I didn't use any wedges or dashes. When your reagent is a halogen molecule, X2, so either Cl2, Br2, or I2, in the solvent carbon tetrachloride, and often this will just be written like this, with the solvent not mentioned, then you get halogenation. So, with halogenation, an X atom adds to both of your sp2 hybridized carbons, and since it's symmetrical, there is no regiochemistry to consider. This goes through the halonium intermediate, which is a cationic three-membered ring, which means that it will always be anti.
So you get this, and it's enantiomer, the anti-addition products. When you use a halogen molecule, Cl2, Br2, or I2, but your solvent is water, then you get halohydrin formation, where your halogen adds here, and your hydroxyl adds to the more substituted. Again, you go through the halonium intermediate, so you get anti-addition. So, you get two products, they're anti. The one that is pictured, and it's enantiomer. If your reagent is a peroxy acid, like metachloroperoxybenzoic acid or peroxyacetic acid, you get anti-dihydroxylation, which means you get a hydroxyl here and a hydroxyl here, and we go through a cyclic three-membered intermediate, so it's anti-addition. You get the pair of enantiomers as products, and they're anti because one of the hydroxyls added on a wedge and the other one added on a dash. You can also get the same result, anti-dihydroxylation, if you go through a two-step process where first you make a halohydrin by using bromine molecule, chlorine molecule, or iodine molecule in water. So we'll have a halohydrin and then reacting that with um, sodium hydroxide gives the hypoxide, which then um, opens up to become the anti-diol. If you use a catalytic amount of osmium tetroxide uh, regenerated by NMO, you get syndihydroxylation. That's syn addition of hydroxyl groups at both of your sp2 hybridized carbons. So you get the syn products, where both of the hydroxyl groups that added are on wedges, or the enantiomer, where both of the added hydroxyl groups are on dashes. For the NMO, you could also substitute T-butyl hydroperoxide. You could also accomplish this by using KMnO4 followed by sodium hydroxide in cold conditions. When your reagent is first ozone, O3, followed by the mild reducing agent, DMS, you get ozonolysis, which cleaves the pi bond. And then the two sp2 hybridized carbons become carbonyls. In this case, we're cyclic, so we're only going to get one product instead of two fragments. It helps to number the carbons in the alkene. This means I'm going to now have a straight chain compound with actually um, seven uh, carbons and then the one that has a methyl group attached will be a carbonyl and you'll also have a terminal carbonyl. So here it is, you can see the methyl group there, that's that methyl group. And very typically, uh, a terminal carbonyl will be shown with its hydrogen so that you can identify it easily as an aldehyde. Try it yourself. What would the ozonolysis product of this crazy molecule be?
pause your video and give it a try. This is what I get.